Hello, and welcome to another episode of Cooking with Corona. Although, as you'll know, if you've been following me up to this point, we're not actually cooking with Corona. We are, in fact, cooking in a state of semi-lockdown in what is now Tier 4. That is, of course, unless you're watching this and you're suffering from COVID-19, in which case I suppose we are, in fact, cooking with Corona, both respects to the connotations that appear within that sentence. Now, I know that from the way that I've uploaded these, the I know it may not seem a long time since I did my last recipe because of the way and frankly the slowness with which I edit these things, but I assure you I have not in fact cooked since before Christmas. Of course, all the recipes uh, prior to the mince pies, I think it was, or the gammon, were, were uploaded before Christmas. What I'm going to do now is make some lovely guinea fowl, and I know that sounds as though we're still in Christmas season, but of course you'll have a lot of leftovers when Christmas and New Year is over. Now one recipe that is good for after Christmas, after Sunday dinner, I've already made and it's called Bubble and Squeak. You can proceed to that if you like. But I'm going to do this one with guinea fowl. Because the festive season is over now, they're going cheap. And I found some lovely vegetables and I'm going to, I've already shown you once how to roast potatoes and parsnips with uh, goose fat. I've also roasted potatoes at least with uh, beef dripping. Today I'm going to do it by cooking it underneath the bird. And this here is what I'm going to stuff it with, or part of what I'm going to stuff it with. You see how apricots, when you soak them, they don't taste the same as they would if you had them fresh. Neither do they taste as they do when you dry them. But dried apricots placed in water have a taste all of their own. Mmm. Um. But in a stuffing, they work wonderfully. So stuffed guinea fowl with vegetables underneath. And I might, if I've got the time, make a cabbage dish to go alongside it. In fact, I ought to tell you, this is something of a hybridised recipe. The guinea fowl itself with vegetables underneath it is one of, it's from the BBC's Good Food team. The stuffing is Mary Berry's, and the cabbage one, if I make it, is from the Two Fat Ladies. Uh, so, we, so we've got a lot of uh, mixed flavours here, which is exactly the point. Now, for my purposes, I should probably need only half of this swede. I've got a just what the one parsnip here, one long carrot, one short carrot, because it's just me here. I'll do more uh, if I feel I need more, and one onion. But now I think about it, I may in fact swap that for a red onion, because I uh, I think I might prefer that. So that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm not going to insult your your intelligence by suggesting you don't know what they're going to look like or how to peel them. Just uh, take the chestnut, and well, there's usually a little dip along it. Just put a little slit in there. Do it to each one in turn. And in a preheated oven, mine's on at just over 200 uh, degrees Celsius. Bake them for about eight minutes. Some recipes online say 25 minutes, 30 minutes. There's no need for that if it's preheated. Then in for the required eight minutes. Once they've cooled for a bit, we can unpeel them. All the easier now because, because of the slit that I made. Mmm. Well, could eat that as it is. Mmm. Right. We are going to deal with the stuffing first. One pint or 600 milligrams of water. I've just weighed out the um, apricots then at 225 grams or 8 ounces. I said earlier I wasn't sure whether to use white onion or red but I shall be using both throughout the 
different recipes I'll, I'm using. Now I should be cutting a white one here. As ever, I shall avoid this part because that is the part that um, causes you to weep if you're susceptible to weeping when you peel onions. Chop the apricot in a similar way in very small pieces. Now I've cut all these up. I'm going to take all of this and put it into this water that I just put in the pan. Now they're all here and I'll cook that for about five minutes. And while that's going on, it's supposed to be 225 grams worth of um, breadcrumb. This won't come to anything like that, but we'll do what we can towards it. There's a crust. Still doesn't quite come to uh, the required amount, the nine ounces, but um, should be enough along with the rest. Three ounces worth of butter in there. frying pan. Just put a little of this butter here into the breadcrumbs and the rest. I'm going to put these lovely chestnuts you just saw me bake. Sadly not all of the chestnuts were of good quality once you cut them up. These ones were, and these shall go into the stuffing. Once they're browned, I shall add them to the rest of the mixture. All right, put that in there. And we'll also put these onions and apricots in there. Bring that down so it's easier. mix all that together. Ooh, apricots are still warm. Onions make it look more like stuffing. Bring forth the guinea fowl. We'll salt the inside and maybe season it with some lemon. Right, I've just moved the string back and made that gaping hole wider and into that I'm going to put some stuffing. What's left here Everything that uh, I've managed to put in there, that's what's left. So let's get those veggies then that I had earlier. Nice. And take the bird, put it on its nest. Now we'll smear the lucky little thing with butter. Then I'm most wonderful rasher of bacon over here. Several I think in fact. Right at the same time as all this has been going on I decided to make the cabbage dish as I suggested I would. Here's a nice red cabbage that you can see I've sliced or it's a little a little under half of the cabbage but you can cut and strip up more of it of course if you're serving for more than one or two uh, as I am not. I decored and peeled these apples to go with it as well. You can skip those if you like. And now in this saucepan I have some butter melting. Now there are really two ways of going about this. You can either boil uh, the cabbage for a very long length of time, nearly an hour in fact, then come back to it and add the treacle later. Or in the version I'm following more strictly, the one that uh, the two fat ladies did, you can put it in butter first and kind of do it all at once and then very gradually cook it. I'm going to do it that way. Um, so as the butter melts, I am just going to add the apple and the cabbage. Then take half of this onion and grate it in, like so. Oh, lovely. Put 
put some of that lovely treacle in as well. Difficult to show you with just one hand, but about a tablespoon, maybe two. I must admit I was a tad worried at first because I thought doing it without water wouldn't manage. But if you look, some of the juices have already come out and given it the water all by itself. Now here's some red, white and vinegar. A slurp was the only guidance I had in the uh, original. A slurp it is. And here is some salt. Not too much, not too little, a bit more than a pinch, whatever that measurement may be. And uh, of course, we I always have black pepper in almost everything, but with mine there's a little turmeric in there. Gives it an extra kick. And now I'm going to continue with this, but at the same time, I'm going to put this wonderful bird in the oven. Now, this is on at high heat. We'll move it to low heat a little later as we go on. In the meantime, whilst the oven is preheated at around 190 degrees Celsius, this charming bird on its nest, wrapped in bacon as you see, shall be placed inside. There we are. Now after about 10-15 minutes, then probably more like 10, of cooking on high heat, I transferred it to a low hot heated hob. But I had an idea, only one of the two recipes that I was following, like I said, included water. The one that included water also included sugar. But I thought, since I've got this apricot of water here from the stuffing, why not put some of that in? Just a little bit. Never know. It's my own addition. I've got to make it my own somehow. Right, um, we've only got two minutes before uh, we take the guinea fowl out of the oven for a bit. Here I've got the chicken stock. I think it's the chicken stock that I made. I know it's a stock that I made. It was frozen. I wish you'd seen me detach the lid from the box. I had to drop it on the floor. Well, I'm supposed to use 300 milligrams. Uh, I don't have that amount, but uh, now that I've defrosted it, Just over 200, maybe it's 250 milligrams, so we're almost there. That's the amount of stock that I'll need. I'm supposed to use um, 100 milliliters of white wine, which is yellowtail, which I've never used before. A nice Australian wine though, so should be all right. I've still got this Blossom Hill instead. Australian it is. Now this may look well done. It's been in for 40 minutes and everything, but it isn't cooked straight through. You can see the bacon has shifted because of the heat. Um, I'm just going to move the bacon actually for a moment. Because I need to move the thing in order to put the stock in and the wine to which I referred earlier. Now I've moved the bird. See what the lovely veg looks like. I forgot to mention that I had a little chopped up or part of a chopped up leek there. Should add some nice flavour. What I'm going to do now is uh, cut some garlic. So, stock, white wine. Here I'm just going to chop up some cloves of garlic. Uh, Recipe I'm following says six. I'll probably make it just about four. Here we are then. See how well cut it is? I'll put a little rosemary in there as well. Here we are then. I'll just stir that in then. Stir it in nicely. 
rest the bird back on there and we'll cook for a further 40 minutes. It's been in the oven for about uh, half an hour now, the bird. I've turned this cabbage down even further. This is the stuffing that uh, I didn't put inside the bird. So I'm going to put some nice pepper on this. Pepper and turmeric in my case. And I put that in the oven. All right, it has cooked for the appropriate length of time. Now, I'm going to put it out onto the plate. Mm. Yeah. Vegetables seem relatively soft, but I'll let them cook for at least 10 minutes more, maybe 15. Same temperature. Besides, the stuffing that's still in the oven needs to cook further. Very well, 15 minutes has passed then. Those are the lovely vegetables. And this is the lovely stuffing. That's separate from the bird. I am following a recipe that also um, suggests that you remove the vegetables and then put flour in the in the juices. Uh, should I do that? Should I not? Or should I keep that as gravy? Hmm. Vegetables. Mm. Mm. Cuts far more easily than chicken. Here you can see the uh, stuffing that's on the actual inside of the bird. I have a very different taste, I imagine, from the crispy one. Oh, lovely. I can smell that treacle. Last, the stuffing that was independent of the bird. Let's have a taste then. The bacon that it was tied in first. Trouble with these things is that I've never quite had the knack of stopping them from being burned, but this time it's just about the right side of not being burned. Mm. Good. Carrot, well cooked underneath. Swede. Hmm. Also well cooked underneath. That parsnip. Oh, parsnip's well cooked. This is the stuffing that's in that was inside the bird. Good. Softer, of course, than. Mm. There's a bit of that Swedish cabbage, I believe it is. Uh, and if it isn't, then it is. If you're Swedish and you make it, then it becomes a Swedish dish. Let's put it that way. Well, Swedish or not, it's beautiful. Well done, two fat ladies. Well done, good food guide. Well done, Mary Curie. I th hope. Let's make sure that the guinea fowl itself is excellent. It is. It's beautiful. Let's try Parsons' nose. The it's supposed to be the sweetest bit, isn't it, of a bird? Oh. As ever, well, as ever when I've uploaded a dish, there have been a few that I've not been able to upload. If I don't come back to you, I'll forget you're there and I'll eat the lot. So, that's lovely stuffed guinea fowl with the winter vegetables underneath. Sadly, no potatoes this time, but you know how to bake her roast potatoes by this point. 
together with red, possibly Swedish, cabbage. Glaze with treacle. Try it yourself if you wish, and if you don't wish, feel free not to. Thanks very much, enjoy yourselves, ta-ta! All the recipes uh, prior to the mince pies, I think it was, or the gammon, were, were uploaded before Christmas, but... Uh, But in fact, I've not cooked since before Christmas. Of course, I've, I didn't upload any of a lot of them since before Christmas, but trust me, the festive season is only just over, whatever the date may be uh, when I put when I upload it. It's only the 17th of January today, I think. Yes, it is. I'll tell you, the, the dish I have in mind, one is one of Delia's recipes. The stuffing is one of... Mary Pe uh, Just find this little area here. This slight dip that you get in chestnuts. And give it a little slit with the knife. We are going to focus on the stuff. I've just weighed out the um, apricots then at 225 grams. Or eight ounces. I said earlier I wasn't sure whether to use white onion or red, but I shall be using both throughout the different recipes I'll, I'm using. Is the time that I shall be focusing. I say focusing. Add the apple and the cabbage and drop some on the floor.